Hey, Lauren, how are you? Good. Give me a give me a the resume. Whole, the give me whole a resume. <laughs> spiel. Uh, my name is Lauren Sanderson. I am from Indiana, and I live here in LA now. I make music to hopefully inspire people to just empower, be empowered, and be themselves, and just put their headphones in and drown the world out, and uh, yeah, embrace that, who they are. Um. All right. So, what got you into music? Tell me about yourself. Like, what? What? what why? Honestly, coming out of high school, I just wanted something that just wasn't school related. I just didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do college and I was just thinking like, what can I do where I don't have to like have this piece of paper and be like, I'm worthy of like <laughs> using my voice. And so I looked up on Google how to do a TED talk. <laughs> and I'm just like, how do people do it? Like, do you have to be certified or what? And I just found an application, typed it in, somehow I got it. Did a TED talk, <laughs> yeah, out of high school, and um, and I had a PO box at the time where people would kind of write me and just let, literally just like let it all out, and and um, and so that's kind of what my TED talk was based on was what those letters were about, and so I started doing speaking, and then I, I got kind of bored because it just wasn't <laughs> crazy enough, and it wasn't like. I didn't feel like I could fully express myself, so I just started turning my speeches into songs and kind of went from there. That's incredible. Did yeah. you always write music? Was that always something that was always there? I always loved music, but I grew up growing up in the Midwest. I just didn't ever think that was a real op option, I guess, or like possibility. And so I would write like poems and raps and stuff like that <laughs> from a young age, but then like kind of as I got older and I just started looking up YouTube beats and kind of going from that, like route, that. that route. Yeah. I like that. That's different. That's, yeah. that, that's very different, especially since you're from the Midwest and it's very yeah. so connected and driven into mm -hmm. this time and what's going on now and how people create and what they do now. So that's so cool. So you went from <laughs> living it up. And <laughs> I guess. <laughs> living it up. In the and now fields. you jump onto YouTube. And then, yeah. wait, no, no, actually, you have a TED Talk. Let's yeah. You have a TED Talk. Mm -hmm. You jump onto YouTube. And now you're here sitting in front of this New York guy. And we're talking about mental health. We're here. What, what brought you here? What got you into mental health and wanting to be an advocate? Honestly, it's just who I am. I think it's like not even to sound cliche. It's just it wasn't ever an option to not be like about that stuff because just growing up, I especially being gay, I just felt always like there was just a disconnect between me and other people. And it was something that was so like, not even that, but just my my outgoingness, my loudness, my uniqueness. I feel like everything, it was just so suppressed. And I feel like that's not a way to live. And there's so many people just living their everyday life so consumed by what people think that at the end of the day, I just want people to know that you create your life and you don't have to live based off of how you think other people were, will perceive you by doing this or saying this. So that's kind of what it is. It's just honestly, to, I don't want to just live my life just doing what I think people want me to do and saying what I think people want me to say. And so I just make music to be myself and hopefully like other people will listen to it and do the same. That's cool. It just sounds like you went on. Uh, honestly, that's one of my codes is to unapologetically be myself. Yeah. It's like no matter what you see is what you get. Yeah. And um, and what you get is what you see. <laughs> yeah. And and honestly, just living by this mentality of just like, this is who I am. That's it. If you like it, awesome. If you don't, awesome. And that's that. it. Like I I just I don't want to change for anybody. Being. Um, a person in the community, in the LGBTQ community, mm -hmm. from the Midwest. How was it like growing up? Like, what was that like? It was so invisible, like, in that community, in, in that environment. It's so not talked about that I didn't even know that was a part of who I was oh, wow. until I was in, like, my junior year of high school because I didn't see it on the street. I didn't see it on TV. I didn't see my parents talking about it or my family. There was really no gay people at my school. And so it was just not even like in my world. It wasn't even in my realm until literally the internet came about. And I started just like 
being obsessed with it because it was the first place where I saw artists like Tyler the Creator and Frank Ocean and Lana Del Rey and, and, and I'm seeing all these artists doing just crazy stuff and just being themselves and I'm like, maybe I like girls, I don't know. Wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. So you found Turns some freedom. Out I did. You found some. <laughs> you, <laughs> you found some freedom. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like you found your freedom on the internet, and it's and it's and it's cool because not everyone finds their freedom on the internet. Mm -hmm. um, the internet can be a, a difficult place. The internet could uh, honestly be a toxic place mm -hmm. for mental health. How do you how do you balance that? Um, being the fact that you have such a huge voice on the internet, and and also it kind of helped. Mm -hmm. free you it liberated you in such a way so you have a really good outtake on the plus and minuses give me a little bit of that so i think when i started on the internet like in high school it was such a different world like i was on there tweeting every thought that <laughs> entered my brain without a single like feedback no or a question or anything <laughs> i was just like yep 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 and now you're right there are just people talking down about anything and everything because that is the attention place that's how you go viral that's how you get big nowadays in a lot of people's minds is that you just spew all this hate and that's what drives people to talk more and chime in more and i just feel like for me the way i balance it is just realizing that people's hate always comes from insecurity there's no person out there that's whole and happy in their life and it's just like I hate this outfit. This is this sucks. This song is bad. Like there's nobody doing that. And so really like not taking anything personally because nothing on there is personal and don't be afraid to like step away. Like it's not it doesn't have to be your whole life. As much as people are starting to make it their whole life and that's scary, but it doesn't have to be like wake up and go outside and make breakfast and call a friend and don't make your whole personality based on the two cents in your comments, you know? Exactly. And yeah. since we've all collectively experienced a pandemic, even people who weren't on the internet are like yep. TikTokers and everybody's moving and all these things are happening. How do you feel that um, impacted mental health um, what, in your experience? Well, am I allowed to cuss? That's actually a first. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I feel like mental health is shit right now, yes. honestly. Yes, mental health is shit right now. That's a good t-shirt. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it, I would say that I, it's, I have mixed emotions because I'm one of those people that almost sometimes I, I feel like I was wired to like almost toxically see the positive in everything. <laughs> To where I like don't let myself feel the, the vulnerable shit emotions. Ah, and that's okay. something I'm working through right now. But it's just one of those things where I feel like we were all forced to just slow way down. And a lot of us were ready to face our inner demons and our inner, you know, struggles. But some of us weren't. And it just hit me like a fucking brick out of nowhere. And... Just, I didn't even know what to think, you know, starting to have anxiety attacks and panic attacks, questioning my career, questioning my friends, my family. I mean, I'm just like, it's so much time to think. And I think so many people are questioning themselves right now and questioning their path. And I guess it's natural, but it's scary too. Yeah, it is. It really is. It's like being alone with all of those thoughts and... Of course, it's so good to talk to friends and so good to talk to family, but sometimes you do get wrapped up in that, that inside fear state. Voice. Yep, that voice inside that your inside, head. Yeah. Yep, that kind of tells you a lot of different things. Have you, throughout all of this, throughout life and pandemics and all this stuff, have you ever, like, have you gone to therapy? Have you ever, like, tried it, tested it out? What's the conversation around it? Have... Well, therapy is something I've always been for. I always thought everyone should do it. Everybody should do it. And that's, it's funny because my girlfriend right now, she goes to therapy every single week, and she has since the day I met her. And I have always been like, therapy, therapy. But then again, I didn't go. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was, it's, like that, it's like that thing where people are like, you should be gentle with yourself while they're like, oh, why did you do that? Why did you say that? <laughs> and it's like, wait. And it's funny that you ask, because just yesterday, I signed up for therapy. That's good. Congrats. And it's awesome. Congrats. Th please. 
Please. Congrats. Welcome Please. to the club. I need it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and like to a T, to the therapist, I'm like, I always think I can handle everything on my own because I do so much That's forward me. thinking. <laughs> I every single day I'm on YouTube like how to be, how to how to stop being defensive, how to be more positive, how to and I'm always like podcast world and everything, but I'm like. I think it's time that I need outside feedback of like how accurate is my thought process and and my own my own internal dialogue. How accurate is this and how what's helping me and what's not? I want to know. Mm -hmm. That's kind of cool because even when you said like, hey, you just go on YouTube and you're looking mm -hmm. these things up, you're trying to find answers through the internet, um, and now you're more so trying to find answers through yourself. So sitting with a therapist, what, what, did, what, what did that reveal for you as far as like your connection to the internet? Because it played such a huge role in your freedom. Well, I just signed up yesterday. My first session's next week. But what really got me into it was because me and, me and my girlfriend both went to her therapist last week. Awesome. Yeah. So like a group session. Yeah. And okay. it wasn't even necessarily because we were like struggling or anything. I, she was just like, but that's come meet my thing. therapist. I love that. I actually absolutely love the fact that you guys went not because something was wrong. Yeah. You see a lot of people really... assume that something catastrophic happens and then you go to therapy or something catastrophic happens, then you go to group therapy. Mm -hmm. or, but it's not always, problems aren't always associated with therapy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just need to ensure that yourself is aligned. And I exactly. think that's a huge message. I think that's huge for people to understand that, hey, therapy isn't just when something's wrong, you know? And I think that people should just go to therapy to continuously grow in their lives and in their thought processes because we get so stuck in the way that we are and the way that we think, especially based on how we grew up and what our parents did and what our siblings did. And we sometimes don't realize, like, you're not even the one thinking that stuff. You're not even in your body thinking that thing and saying that thing and doing that thing. You're, you are unconsciously living somebody else's thoughts. That's true. You know? That's and true. Don't let it get so far deep into this negative place that that's why you have to, I mean, if that's what makes you go, that's what makes you go, because that's what happened for me, but I wish I would have gone months ago. At the end of the day, it's not, yeah. you know, you're there, you made yep. it, there you go. It it's all not, happens for a reason. Exactly, and it's all, and, and it's all in good timing. Mm -hmm. And being that you're from the Midwest and you see what's going on in the world, you're, you're, you, you seem to be a very self-aware person, which I absolutely love, by the way. Thanks. And um, who you are, the things that you do and who you are impact you as far as like the social justice movements and the things that have happened. What, what is your point of view of that? At the end of the day, equality is everything. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, <laughs> I was out there just... Did you participate? Did oh, you, yeah. yeah did. I got shot. Oh, really? Yeah, I got shot by a rubber bullet. Please tell me a little bit. How did that make you, not physically, mentally, how did that make you feel? It made me feel so scared for where we are because I, um, my girlfriend and I, we were going every day and I was, I was going to those protests every single day, you know, just fighting. And standing up for for the voices that aren't can't be as heard sometimes and and what was so scary was like i wasn't doing anything wrong <laughs> that 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 was what was wild i wasn't I wasn't throwing things i wasn't harassing anyone i was just standing there saying black lives matter and <laughs> shot me wow and i even got it on video that was the most wild part i had i had um I had my phone out and I was recording the video and and I saw in the video the cop goes like this and then he shot me. Wow. And it was one of those moments where you realize that like I like it's it's such a weird comparison but even in the the people commenting on your pictures and everything from insecurity it was almost like in that moment that cop couldn't bear what was happening that that they were being questioned and that we we're using our voices against their actions and ideologies.
And do you think maybe he was having a mental breakdown there yeah. himself? Mm -hmm. Because that's the thing. There's two sides of that spectrum. And I think um, on both sides, uh, uh, there's there's a lot of pain. There's a lot of struggle. There's a lot of hurt. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of a miss and lack of communication thereof. So then situations like you had to unfortunately go through happen. Um, and did you carry anything? Do you feel like there's any trauma left from that? Is Did it change you in any kind of way um, mentally? I don't know if I have figured that out yet because it's just, it was so surreal, you know? It was just such a scary moment and and just realizing what, what happens to others every day that you don't even have to think about because of privilege and that, that feeling is in itself is really like confusing to sit with and it's, it makes me feel sad. You know, and it makes me just want to keep fighting. I think more than anything, it's not going to make me back down and be like, oh, no, now I'm scared. It's going to make me go even harder because, like, at the end of the day, we're all fighting for each other, you know? That's true. That's true. And I, and I appreciate that. And um, <laughs> as far as, like, what do you do for you to ensure, like, on a day-to-day -day, that you're mentally as stable and as balanced as you possibly could be? Because, you know, it's a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. Not one day is the same and there's no absolute blueprint. So what are you doing for yourself? I know it's so random. People probably are not expecting this, but tennis. <laughs> I've literally been playing tennis every single day. That's a first. I haven't heard that one. That's a that's a first. Oh, it's the best. It's the best thing in the world. I've been waking up. I just moved to like the middle of the mountains in the middle of nowhere, and I've been walking every morning to the tennis court and just, just going. Just tennis. And what, tennis. What's what's so freeing about that? What's so liberating oh, I just about love tennis? It. It's the best sport in the world. It's the best. It's is it, just. Is it, the, is it the, the endorphin release that tennis is giving you? Or is it I just guess. like literally the peace of mind that you're playing tennis in the mountains? Is it the location? Oh, it's all of it. It's, it's all the of location. It? It's the environment. It's, the, it's just working out without running. <laughs> <laughs> really anything that has to not do with um, running. The, the, the final question I normally want to ask is, uh, what gives you hope out of everything? Out of the, the, the way the world has been? Um, mm -hmm. What you experienced growing up, you, you've, you've, you, you have layers. You come with a lot of layers, and that's <laughs> awesome. You're complex. Yeah. Um, so what, where do you find hope? What gives you hope? Honestly, what gives me hope is just knowing that it's all happening exactly how it's supposed to. And even in those moments where you feel so lost and heavy and, and sometimes you don't want to get out of bed, but at the end of the day, I think what really just makes me hold on is knowing that you are here for a reason and everything good and bad that's happening to you in these moments is leading you to your higher self and leading you to exactly where you're supposed to be and without the terrible moments and without the best moments you wouldn't have those lessons and those those i guess yeah you, you wouldn't have those hard lessons to really get you to the best version of yourself and so just knowing even when the worst is happening, you're still learning so much more than you can even realize in that moment that's going to take you so much further in life. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and other than that, any last words, anything you want to share with the world? Because I feel like you do. Don't box yourself in and don't make yourself, like, don't, don't put too much pressure on yourself to be a certain way and spend that energy that, that society puts on us to try and make us feel like we have to be something else or to say something else or always trying to to be better and stronger and prettier and skinnier and all this stuff and just use that energy to to give it back to yourself and and slow down take the time that you need to just breathe and go see your family and go eat good food and go to a different country and go to therapy and spend more time on you because at the end of the day, if you're not happy with you, you're just not going to be happy with anything in your life. That's true. You know? So, and just know you're not alone, ever. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Sink or swim, you said to me, do you see me falling?